and welcome back and a good day to all well once again we are inside the cab as you can see of our 2016 2500 you see a little glimpse of what we got going on here in the lower part of the screen but uh, we're going to work on our next upgrade today now the upgrades we've done thus far if you're watching these videos in series the last upgrade we did was upgrade to a premium cluster uh, inside the console uh, away from the standard cluster which has made a huge improvement uh, in being able to see and the amount of data you can now get out of that cluster but working on what we're going to be working on today is what you can see in the box here and as i alluded to in the previous video when we did the cluster i had kind of had the camera pointing at the radio and what you see here is what is considered an RA2. So you have an RA1, this is an RA2. So this is kind of the lower end of the trim level of radio, but this one being an RA2 does have uh, Uconnect and Bluetooth ability to connect the phone to. Uh, what it is lacking is the Android Auto functionality uh, and the online ability that a lot of the newer radios have. So the factory that you can upgrade this vehicle to a factory 8.4 touchscreen, which would give you Android Auto and CarPlay and integrate um, climate controls, things of that nature, into the radio itself, uh, like it does on the upper trim level Chrysler vehicles. Now, we also have in this vehicle what is considered the, as you can see here, one, two, three, four, and you're maxed out. So you've got the four speed fan on here. So the, the upgrade kits to take this particular 2500 from this RA2 to a full on 8.4 touch screen with the proper climate controls, it can be done. Uh, and there are companies out there, infotainment being one of them, that makes these kits where you get the new bezel piece, this new radio trim bezel piece, new climate control unit, the radio, the new wiring harnesses, because uh, also what is needed in order to bring this particular, what is considered a, again, a four speed fan up to a seven speed controlled fan it requires an additional HVAC module that would sit here uh, on this side of the uh, dash an additional wiring harness that would convert this over not only to a seven speed fan but also instead of having manual temperature control that you see here you would have the temperature buttons on the side so we also have what is considered manual AC because we've got this manual button here for whether or not we want things colder, uh, cooler or hotter, and we can't control currently any of that through the radio. So to be fair, uh, the kits, the factory kits would bring all that up to that level uh, and integrate, and not integrate, but it would also, it would integrate the controls in the sense that you could control the climate through the radio as well as the push buttons below. Well, after adding up the cost of the kits of what we would need, and I'm a big proponent for keeping everything factory, uh, cost-wise, however, it's almost the same cost as what you can see here, which is this is a Lynx Well, uh, what is considered T-style tablet, 10.4-inch Android tablet, that is going to take the place and pretty much go from here, where the bottom of our bezel is for our climate controls, on up to here. So it's gonna take the entire place of this center section. So not only will it integrate our controls for our AC into the head unit, by going with an Android tablet, it's gonna to give us the ability, and we will be adding a SIM card to this radio, a data only SIM card. Uh, I use Google Fi, uh, so it doesn't cost me any extra to have a data SIM, and the data the radio will use will just be taken away from the group plan. 
Uh, but again, not only will it integrate the AC controls into the head unit, but it also gives us a head unit that's going to run Android. So we could bring Google Maps up on a nice 10.4 inch screen and just have the radio navigate directly uh, rather than having to plug in the phone and do it via Android Auto, which would still be an option uh, either on the 8.4 or on this unit as well. We could just go Android Auto and power it from the phone. But the ability to be able to have full-time internet in the truck and be able to do things like Google Maps and internet searches and things of that nature uh, would be very, very useful. Uh, the radio can kind of do everything in and of itself. So that is the reason why I decided to at least try uh, to go one of these links well. Uh, to go the links well route that you see here versus stepping up to the 8.4 now if we run into huge issues and we can't get those issues resolved or if anything ends up being more trouble than what it's worth then what we will end up doing is possibly just pulling the links uh, links well out and going with a, a factory 8.4 but we're going to give this one a shot first because i, I think it would actually be look kind of cool in here to have Again, that tablet go all the way from here on up to the top here. Now, with all that said, um, as I mentioned, we will be putting the SIM in this radio uh, so that we can get it online. Uh, we're also going to be trying a couple of things that um, it's not a fault of Linkswell. It's just some items that they don't support that we're going to see if we can integrate. And depending on how it works out, you probably already know the answer to how this is going to work based on the, the thumbnail and the title description of this video. But currently, this head unit does not support using the integrated mics that are inside the rearview mirror that our old Uconnect system currently uses for being able to make phone calls and, and things of that nature. So, we have got down below here the pinout for a 2016 ram 2500 for the radio connector and it's this big 52 pin connector that goes on the back of that radio and more importantly what we're going to do we're going to trace down the pins for microphone one and microphone two both positives and then we're going to use the microphone one uh microphone in negative that you see here so on this particular harness, we want pins 29, 30, and also uh, 40. Yeah, so we want 29, 30, and 40. And what we're going to do is use an adapter, and don't worry, I'll show you all this when we get to it. So rather than use the external mic they give you in the kit, which normally they give you like a little bud type mic, uh, that a lot of individuals will just kind of route through the headliner and hang it uh, in here uh, just so it's kind of able to pick you up but also be out of sight, out of mind. But rather than use that again, we're going to try to use these microphones that you can kind of see sticking up out of the rear view mirror already. Now, again, it's not a fault of Link Sys. It's, it's, I'm sorry, Link links well. Sorry, I, I've Coming from an IT background, I, I keep mixing the two together. Apologies. Uh, the So it's not a dig on that. It's it's not a uh, negative in any way. Um, and I, I can understand why they wouldn't necessarily support the factory units is because depending on the type of trim level and RAM that you have and whether you have Uconnect or you don't have Uconnect is going to change the microphone location on this pinout quite a bit you know make model and year is all going to change that uh, like i said and uh, so but we're going to try it and if it works well for us then you know yay great it's just a piece that we won't have to you know have an extra piece dangling from the head headboard or headliner i should say the other thing that we are going to try because i've been seeing this in the groups as well is that they also give you a gps antenna with this head unit and what the gps antenna is there for it's for use by the android um, operating system and the op operating system in general especially if you're going to be using it for things like running google maps directly from the radio 
it obviously needs a GPS signal to determine its location. Well, rather than, again, having to install and route a separate GPS antenna, I am seeing online, now this truck also does not have, uh, is not equipped with a GPS antenna because again, we don't have the navigation radio, but a lot of individuals online have stated that they, they have done this and it works. So we're gonna try it. We're gonna try to use the Cirrus XM uh, antenna as a GPS antenna. Like I said, it, it may work, it may not work. We're just gonna have to try it. I'll show you the adapter I got, but I got kind of a universal adapter that'll plug into the Cirrus connection and allow us to then take that connection and plug it into the GPS spot on the radio. Again, it'll be something we have to try. There, there's a lot of postings on the, in the forums and such where individuals said that they have done it. Uh, and they did it successfully, and others say that the you know that, that they ended up just going with the GPS antenna that was in the box. So again, we're going to be trying a couple things that uh, isn't natively supported by the radio, but uh, just trying to keep as much factory uh, integration into the truck uh, as we can. Now this video is going to be lengthy again, with just not just me rambling here and just kind of explaining things. But I wanted to get out there, get all that out there that uh, uh, I think this may end up all being one video or I may have to kind of chop this uh, in, in a couple of parts just to help save time. But uh, what I'm going to do is pause you, bring you back, and then we're going to do a quick inventory of what comes in the box. And again, I'll just show you the label there. That's the head unit we're going with. So this is a Gen 6, and you can see our flash and ram the screen size and this is also a I believe this was android 10 10 or 11. matter of fact there you go i'll give you a better shot of uh, what we're in here android 11 at least per the box android 11. so a gen 6 android 11. so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pause you and uh, kind of the introductory is done and i'll bring you back and then, like I said, we'll go over a little bit more on the head unit here itself. Then we'll get kind of in the, in the guts of the box, so to speak. So one moment. And welcome back. Well, as promised, I'm going to give you another shot of that side label there. Just kind of give you an idea of what we're dealing with here. Now, this is a Linkswell, again, Gen 6 radio. So per their website and their documentation, uh, this should support and do wireless um, Android Auto and uh, Apple CarPlay. So I use Android phones here. So we'll be using the Android Auto or wireless Android Auto. Uh, and I went with Linkswell after doing a lot of research on this. There are various manufacturers. This name kept coming up a lot in the forums, uh, and I purchased this directly from one of their resellers. I believe it was ADC Mobile, if I remember correctly. If that is incorrect, I'll put a, a correction up on the screen. And what happens is, is the reason why I went with the reseller that I did is that that particular reseller uh, gives lifetime support for the radio. They also give you access to their install tips, which when you purchase the radio, they'll send you a URL that is password protected. So I can't share that with you uh, because it is a, a benefit that you get for purchasing the unit from them. But when you purchase the unit, they'll send you an email with a link and a password in it that gets you access into their install tips as well as Linkswell has a YouTube channel with a bunch of install videos in it as well. Uh, that uh, very, very uh, detailed and they show you all the connectors, which everything, what everything kind of plugs into and is very, very helpful. So that's why I went with this particular unit. It was getting good reviews. It was getting good comments. Uh, and the level of materials for support uh, that I have found uh, seem to be much, much more uh, than the other uh, resellers that were selling similar uh, type units. So with that being said, 
I'm going to show you some of the packages of wiring that you get in here. And yes, I had been inside this box before because I was verifying all the connectors and pinouts prior to the video. So it will come better packaged inside of its uh, plastic bags other than what you see here. This is just because I was inside of them earlier poking around. Now you have kind of two main bags of wiring. Now, first of all, don't let all the wiring kind of uh, seem intimidating. What you have to understand about these units is that they're geared in such a way to support a wide range of trim levels and options and features. So you're going to have wiring and connections into this unit for to support features that you may never you may not even use because you don't have that particular feature on your vehicle. But you've got the main kind of what I would consider the vehicle specific wiring harness, as you can kind of see from the label right there. This is a Dodge Ram, you know, GT6A version 11 package. And what you get inside of here is the main wiring harness that'll plug into the factory connector, gives you all your breakouts for your audio your RCA outs for your various cameras, CD players, things of that nature. And don't worry, we'll, we'll go over at least all the options we're going to use in this truck. Because again, there's going to be a lot of these connections that, to be honest with you, I'm just going to uh, heat shrink them, cover them up, because it's, it's going to be options that we're, we're not going to need. Uh, and also, uh, this connector here, which is labeled... 8p usb harness what this one is and you'll notice on the opposite end of this you'll see that funky looking connector and also this says phone link this one interfaces with a factory usb connection that's behind the radio ultimately well that will end up at least in this truck is right up here inside of our center console that we added and it will come out right here to this square USB module that has our aux port next to it. That will retain this USB connection. This one is a spare one that you can run elsewhere. It's used for phone link. You can use this uh, again per their install video. Uh, to charge a phone, to plug in like maybe an external hard drive or the phone itself and charge the phone, so on and so forth. So what we're going to use this one for, because remember, we already know that this one is set for power and this one's wired for power via the connection that goes underneath the driver's seat. So I don't need to necessarily run this one uh, up here because uh, we're going to have that one tied in with this connector. Now, they make a note about not being able to use this for Android Auto going forward because the way Chrysler does it is that the circuitry needed to regulate voltage, handshake, so on and so forth to make Android Auto work through USB, um, it's already internally done on their radio. So the circuitry in here will kind of conflict the circuitry here if you try using this to make a USB-based, you know, Android Auto connection. So what we're going to do is, again, we're, we will make this one live, not necessarily use it for Android Auto since we can do the wireless on our version 6 here. Uh, but what we will do for this one, just for convenience, is that I've got an extension cable that I'll show you. We're actually going to run it down underneath the console, since this is nice and cavernous underneath here and gives us a great ability to run wiring. And I'm thinking what we're going to do is come down inside of our nice little deep well here. And I've got them on the way that hopefully will be here today, but it's basically some USB mounting ports and usb pass-through ports that we'll be able to plug a connector in the back of and it'll just give us another usb port uh, that we can then you know possibly plug a hard drive into for external media uh, or just have another port that we can use to charge a phone with again not quite sure yet so it may end up here or we may end up 
just utilizing as just a cell phone holder uh, or we may end up just utilizing our little cubby hole back here and just putting a little uh, little plug in there and that way it'll give us the ability to get like a little external you know ssd base or solid solid state based one terabyte maybe hard drive and plug it in here and that way we can have it loaded up with a bunch of video files and mp3s and things of that nature so that's what i'm thinking right now again that one will be factory that one will end up here on the top of our console and that's a spare one that we're going to route at some point to some location also what is left inside of the factory wiring bag here is that you've got a couple of uh, antennas in the factory bag and if you look at the label on it you'll see that's labeled 4g so that is a 4g cell antenna and so is that one so we've got two of these and again we will be putting a sim card in here and it does have a sim adapter in case you need to go from the smaller i believe what is called micro sim to a slightly larger one to support the radio uh, we will be using that uh, and I, so like i said you got the sorry i get getting sidetracked here so we've got the two 4g antennas we've got the sim adapter we've got a uh, toss link or optical connection you can see right there so if you're an audio file and you've got your own you know sound system set up and maybe all you want is just the optical out of the radio. Well, there you go right there. And again, we don't have that kind of a high-end system on this truck. So this will be one of the cables that we won't be plugging in or using. But they do give it to you in the kit. Now, this is an important box here. This is the CAN bus decoder. That will plug into the wiring harness. We'll show you that here in a bit when we get to that step. And this is what's going to allow it to talk to the vehicle and do things such as uh, allow your factory steering wheel controls for your volume and items to still work with the radio. Now, one item that we will be losing with this truck is the factory Uconnect functionality, which again, um, I could just make phone calls directly through the phone. Um, I hardly ever, um, even when driving, uh, accept a cell phone call on my phone. Normally I'll just let those things go to voicemail or just have the individual text me. Uh, usually I won't answer a phone until I'm not driving or I pull over somewhere. So losing the factory Uconnect system in our case is, is no harm, no foul. And this little bit of cable you see here that is labeled auto AC converter. This is if you have what is cons what they consider a RAM high, meaning that not only do you have auto, uh, you have the push button climate controls that would also tie into the radio, but you also have an automatic push button climate controls. And this just adapts the factory harness into a connector that'll fit in the back of the radio. Again, we don't have that upper level um, AC. We don't have an auto AC in this RAM. So that'll be another connector that we can just kind of toss off to the side that we're not going to need. We've got our factory antenna adapter. So we'll plug that into the factory antenna cable and we'll show you that when we get in there. And that part will plug in the back of the radio. And that's kind of it for what comes in the factory bag of cables, which is a lot. And this kind of is your, I guess you would, you could, you could call it your accessory bag, or maybe the the radio bag of cables, is I guess would be another way of putting it. Got a few more things in here. Let's just grab the first item here. That's that microphone I was talking about earlier. You can see it's a standard 3.5 millimeter microphone jack. And again, what they want you to do is to hang or kind of clip, uh, you know, maybe somewhere right in there, just kind of right behind the rearview mirror and just run the wiring down your pillars and over and plug it into your radio. So again, we're going to try to integrate the factory one before we go this route, but just to let you know that that is their preferred method is to use that plug-in mic. 
Uh, and this is the GPS antenna that we spoke about earlier. Again, we have an adapter that we're going to try to use the Cirrus XM antenna, which again is already on the top of the vehicle and lovingly exposed to the outside. We're going to try to use that for a GPS antenna. If it doesn't, doesn't work, then we'll come back and install this um, external one. And you have another one of these flat antennas in here. And this one, if I recall correctly, yep, this one is labeled your Wi-Fi. Now, per their instructions, even if you're not going to put a SIM card in this radio, this antenna still has to be installed. And the reasoning is, is that Android Auto uh, will, in our case, Android Auto is going to not only use Bluetooth to pair to the phone, but it's also going to use the Wi-Fi to transmit data. So if you've ever noticed that in a vehicle that does have a head unit that has Android Auto that a lot of times when you plug the phone in, it'll automatically turn your Bluetooth and stuff on on your phone back on for you. And that's one reason why, because it, it needs that pairing, it needs that connectivity in order to transmit data. So we'll be installing this because we are going to put a SIM card in here, plus we need it anyway. And you'll see that we've got a cable here that says RCA audio out. So you've got options here for subwoofer, front left, front right, rear left, rear right. So in case you've got other options that uh, you need to plug into, uh, those are again your audio outs. Maybe you've got a separate subwoofer or something along that nature. Uh, you've got your outputs from the radio you can tap into. We're not going to use any of these because I'm not running any separate external third-party amplifiers, anything of that nature. But we do need, off of this RCA audio out cable, it's kind of misleading, but um, I kind of, and I understand it, but you see that says mic. So that is going to be what we're going to, going to plug our modified uh, three and a half inch microphone connector into once we have it pinned out of our of our harness again that we're going to try to use those factory integrated mics so all of this in our case we don't need any of those rca connections but we will need that connector there moving on to the next piece is also going to be a cable that we're not going to use now this is labeled dvr cable but uh, per links well and other install documents this gives you a looks like a constant 12 volts as well as an ignition based 12 volts and an extra ground that can be used for many things uh, if you need that piece of functionality or you need like a constant 12 or a switched source of 12 volts uh, again it's labeled as dvr cable but you can use it as they again as they state for other things however I don't need this on here. I don't need a source of uh, constant or keyed 12 volts to come off of the radio, at least not at this time. So it is a cable that we can kind of just kind of push off to the side. We'll keep it in case we need it, but it'll help decolor, declutter our install a little bit. And we've got a, another radio cable here called Auxiliary In. And you can see that what it is here is an auxiliary video in left and right audio feeds. Now, my understanding is that what this is for is like our aux jack that is up here on our console where it's a 3.5 millimeter um, auxiliary jack that you can plug like the output of a phone or like an older iPad shuffle, something along that nature, into this will help preserve that functionality. So part of these RCA connections would actually plug into the RCA pinout connections coming out of our main factory uh, harness adapter here. Now, I might plug these up just to have them plugged in, but uh, I'm probably never ever going to use that auxiliary jack over there to inside the console to be honest with you but we'll plug them in to plug them in but if you wanted to and you know that you weren't going to use that and i may or may not do it depending is that this could technically be yet yet just another cable that if you don't need it you don't have to plug it in and it helps declutter things a little bit and right here we got an important one 
camera inputs. We only have one backup camera on this 2500 and that's the one that's located in the tailgate. So you can see right there we've got one label labeled factory cam input. Now some Rams have a camera in the tailgate as well as a cargo camera as it would be called in the rear tail light. If you have two rears, uh, they make a very strong point about this is that they currently only accept one rear input. So you would need another device if you had the uh, tailgate and cargo cam and you wanted to switch between the two. So just be mindful of that. But we're gonna use the factory one here to give us our tailgate cam back. And you can see that you also have a option here for a right camera input and a front camera input. Now we don't have a front or a right side uh, camera uh, on our vehicle. So we won't have to worry about the other two yellow RCAs on this connector. And they also give you, you can see here, so a couple of wires here. So front camera power, reverse power, uh, and right camera power and 360. Now we, in our case, don't need any of these additional power feeds because we're gonna be using just the already factory uh, tailgate cam. So we literally just need the one RCA connection off of this. Now it's theorizing here and I could be wrong. Linkswell uh, would be better, would know about this better than I would, but the reason why you have the extra power here, I'm assuming that's if you add a third party camera and you need, uh, like I said, the 360 trigger there that would cause all three or the 360 degree input view to show up on the radio. Or it looks like if they give you like a reverse uh, cam, uh, right cam power and front cam power, I'm assuming that's if you go with like a third party and you need a power output to the camera. But again, we're going with the factory tailgate, so we shouldn't have to worry about any of those power lines. So we'll just leave them capped. And finally, the last wiring harness uh, for what is inside the, again, the, what I would consider the radio uh, harness bag. You got an extra USB connection. So you can run a second USB line. And this looks to be just a standard USB connection, standard data, standard power pinout. Uh, again, if you wanted to run this... Uh, to another location, glove box, some other location if you're choosing, maybe use it as another uh, another charging port, something along that nature. Again, I won't be plugging this one up because we're just going to be using the factory one here plus the other one that, again, we may relocate either in the console or here. I, I think two for what we're going to be doing is going to be enough. So we just won't use the third one. Again, that'll help uh, declutter our install a little bit when we go to kind of push all this in place. So that's going to be a lot of rambling there, and I do apologize because it's going to be a long video, and I know that the amount of cabling uh, looks daunting because it's a lot. But again, keep in mind, as you saw here, that that cabling is done up in such a way, it's, it's for production reasons, um, so that way that harness will support a wide range of makes i'm sorry wide range of trim levels in years whereas you saw that you just kind of have to go through it and determine you know what you're going to use versus what you're not going to use but with that being said i'm going to pause you and i'm bring you back but the first thing we're going to do is get our trim out of here now we've got the full floor center console so it means we're going to have to pull this cup holder insert out so if we pull this piece out of here our little tray liner we've got a couple of uh, bolts that are down in here we've got two bolts here and we'll pull our padding up here and i believe we have a third bolt here in the center and nothing underneath the cup holders on this one so one two and at least three i'll bring you back with the defendant actually let's just pull the liner up out of here and take a look it looks like it's one okay so yeah you've got the one here you've got the two here at least on this particular center console and then we're gonna 
pop this up, get this centerpiece out of here, and that will allow us to then take the two Torx bits that is underneath this piece of uh, rubber trim here. You can see them there. And then if we come inside of this cubby hole right above our power port, we've got another Torx bit there. So once we get all this out, we can then pop this bezel out of here and disconnect all our electrical. And that'll get us access to that factory plug. And the first thing we're gonna do is when we get access to the factory plug is look for the pinouts uh, for the factory microphone that we're looking for. We just need to match the pin numbers with the connector and look on making some pins and then go from there. So let me pause you, uh, get some of this stuff tore out of here and I'll bring you back one moment. And welcome back. So we just got our screws out of our lower piece of trim here. Now remember, you got an electrical connection that may or may not be present, um, depending on whether or not you, you added the console in manually after the fact like we did on this particular RAM. But in order to get this trim up, remember you've got, at least on this style of console, uh, the seat overlaps the very end of this. So we just want to be mindful uh, that we got to kind of pick the lower seat up and be able to pop this trim up. And you can see once we have all our screws out, we just grab it to the sides, give it a little bit of a pull. And again, just being mindful of our electrical. There we go, we're out. And we just have to flip it over, unplug our one connector. Yeah, now we can take our entire cup holder assembly, just put it here in the back seat. There we go. Okay, so it's one thing about nice, one nice thing about having a huge back seat in the mega cab of this thing is that anything you put back there ends up in its own time zone. So you got plenty of space to work with. So now, again, as I stated earlier, what we can do, now we have that out of the way, we'll get our two Torx bits out of here, and our one Torx bit here, and I believe these were T15 Torx, if I remember correctly, uh, and then we'll pull this forward. Now, if you're like us, and you have the gear shifter over here on the column and not the floor, this kind of gets in your way a little bit of taking this trim off. Now, you can pull this forward, drop this down as low as it'll go, and that'll give you some space, but, if you watched our console install video, uh, we, what we did find out is when you get this side piece popped free, you can kind of just tilt it forward, disconnect your cables, and then you can kind of drop, pull this end out, drop it down, and then it'll kind of allow you to finagle this vent where it protrudes out of the way and be, basically be able to drop this centerpiece without having to pull your shifting column down. And I'll, I'll show you all that when we get to it. But let me get these Torx fasteners out of here and I'll bring you back. One moment. And welcome back. So you can see we got our screws out and we got our clips undone. It's just plastic clips that clip into both sides. You can kind of grab it from the top and pull it forward or grab it from the top sides and work your way down. Once we have everything unclipped, again, our gear shifter is kind of holding us up a little bit, but again, we got enough room in there. We can kind of pull it from the passenger side out of way enough. You can kind of reach in there now and just disconnect all your cabling. And then once you have all the cabling disconnected, then I'll kind of bring you back again. You can just, once all the cabling's done, you can kind of grab the bottom of it this way, pull it out and then drop it down and that'll clear your, your shifter. Or if you want, you could just put the, if you're sitting over in the driver's seat, you know, you can put it in gear, make sure you get your foot in the brake, but put it in gear, drop it down, and clear it that way. So, let me get some electrical disconnected, and I'll bring you back. One moment. And welcome back. So you can see we have our electrical all disconnected from the back of our panel. Now, what we can do, as I was saying earlier, is just now that you've got plenty of slack, you can just kind of pull it. Same time you pull it forward, drop it down it'll clear the shifter. So this piece we will revisit because we will be end up doing a little bit of modifications to this in order to get the new radio in place. 
but to kind of give you a little bit of a heads up but we'll go, don't worry we'll go over all this and when we get to this step is that we're going to be removing the Phillips screws all around this border and taking this entire center piece out. If you remember when we put the center console in, we actually transferred this center piece over uh, from our old bezel unit over to this new bezel unit. So we're gonna be doing the same process we did. We'll be removing this entire center piece. Now to comment on what was being said on the install video, in our particular install, we're dealing with what they consider a RAM low. Again, meaning that we do not have automatic AC, we have manual AC, but more importantly, we have a four speed fan on here. So one of the main differences is not only do we have this plug here, but we also have this big old honking power connector here. Because what happens is this is your power control to your fan because it's only four speeds. Now seven speeds as well as the autos do this a little bit different. Uh, and if you have a RAM low and you wanted to upgrade it to a seven speed variant, uh, and have it where you don't have this big big old honking power connector here uh, You in theory could do that infotainment sells the kits and, and what it is As I stated earlier, there's a module that ends up going back here, which is an HVAC module You get a new wiring harness you get a new resistor which goes into the uh, blower motor below the dash and then it adapts your existing harness to basically come out to where the control module here, if I remember correctly, won't have this big old honking power feed plugged into it anymore. It'll end up having just a uh, a smaller single single connector that plugs into it, in which in that case you would need the adapter out of the kit. Like I said, I don't, you shouldn't. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm going to go that route here. I'm just going to leave well enough alone and keep the RAM RAM low because the radio will support the again what they consider low, mid, or high. We have the low. We're going to go low. But I figured I'd just throw that out there as trivia for you that if you have a four-speed manual um, control box like this for the AC, you could upgrade it to the you know non-auto or even the auto versions of a seven-speed. Going full auto, however. Would, if you have this particular setup and you went full auto with your AC, it would require some additional programming and modifications done to the HVAC box in the truck and so on and so forth. Anyway, enough useless trivia there. So what we're going to do, we're just going to set our trim panel off to the side here and we're going to work on getting our radio out next. So one moment. It looks like it's, yeah, it's just the same standard bolts that are used all throughout fixing this dash onto the vehicle. Uh, so let me get to work getting those bolts out and I'll bring you back one moment. And welcome back. So you can see we got our radio loose. You can see it's not much to it. Uh, all our connections here in the back, we've got our main harness connection. That is going to be our USB uh, connection that you see right there. Again, that is the one that will come up and plug into the little um, media hub if i believe is what it's called that's there in the top of the console uh, and of course uh, right there is our antenna and of course this is our sirius xm that you see here in the yellow uh, mustard type color connector and that's the one we're going to try to adapt to be able to use that for gps but like i said uh, what i'm going to do is work on just getting all of those disconnected the bigger latch bigger latch right here for the radio is one of those kind you kind of have to you squeeze it together as you saw there and just lift it forward and kind of let it ratchet itself out and it helps release those pins because again it is a big old 52 pin connector uh, so let me get all four of those connections you see out there and i'll bring you back one moment and welcome back so you can see we got our radio out connectors as we were saying earlier that is our sirius xm connector again tell by the kind of yellow yellowish mustard type color connector this big old uh, kind of thicker coax looking connector with the white end on it that's going to be the antenna connector that's what we'll plug our adapter into and that'll be their usb connection again that goes up to our console we spoke about earlier and of course our main harness connection. Now, 
this XM was the only one that was a bit tough to get that clip to finally push free. And uh, mainly because it had been kind of mushed a little bit. You can see whoever ran this in the factory ran it through the metal opening here rather than just dropping this down and coming out the bottom like we just rerouted it, which would have made it, I guess, fit a little bit better, but not quite sure why they did it. Oh, well. No harm, no foul. We'll get it addressed. But the first thing I want to do is look at this connector and figure out where our pins are going to be. Again, we're dealing with some very, very small pins here. So I believe there's some, yeah, there's some numbers written on here that I'm going to have to look at. Again, the, the numbers that we want to deal with are going to be pins 29, 30, and 40. So that will give us microphone N negative, um, microphone 1 positive, and microphone 2 positive. Now there's also a, a number 2 N negative. It looks like they've got these wired separately, but um, if I had to guess, and once we find the pins, we can we can verify it. But I'll bet you more than anything inside that rearview mirror, um, those negatives may be tied together. We'll have to I don't know, we'll have to put an ohmmeter on it and check it. We'll have to check between pins 29 and 39 and see if we get connectivity so let me look at this uh, connector a bit more find some pin numbers and i'll bring you back one moment and welcome back so in case you like i said in case you wanted to see it just using a small meter here just to do some checks there we go and again just checking between the resistance between our ground or what is now our common microphone negative i keep calling negative ground it's it's a habit you can see we got a resistance reading there about 4.6 k like i said these microphones in this truck are actually a higher resistance than what comes with the kit so it may be happy with us doing this or it may not and you can see our other ones about 4.73 k so we got connectivity we know our pins are seated. Now, as we were saying earlier, on to the next step. So it's going to be to take, once again, this audio output connector here. And in our case, we're going to go into the Ram audio, Ram, Dodge Ram low audio tag because we do not have a factory Alpine system. Uh, now, this may look, uh, look a little bit different uh, than your uh, set up because remember we depinned and removed a lot of these connectors we we you originally you're going to have two more on here for a cd input uh, and you're going to have another uh camera uh connector on here for a cargo cam again we weren't using them so i depinned them and removed them and we ended up reusing those pins as you know now to route our mic or to tie in our microphone wiring so uh let me get this connected and then uh, I'll bring it back. And I think before we do the radio and the bezel and all that, we're going to get our antennas situated. We will be using um, all three of these antennas that came in the bag. You've got two 4G and one Wi-Fi. And for placement, what I'm thinking is, and, and I know that uh, they get there's it's quite cavernous under here. And they say as long as you don't place them around metal. Uh, then you're, you, it'll work. Uh, it would work better, as they state, if uh, it had clear line of sight, or basically sitting on top of the dash. So what I'm thinking is, we've got three antennas. I think the cabling is long enough. Since we don't have an Alpine system, we don't have a speaker in the center here. So we can actually just pop this piece of trim up that also houses our daylight sensor. And we might be able to kind of sneak the wiring out and kind of come off left and right with the um, um, 4G antennas and maybe just put the, uh, well, we got a vent right here, so we don't necessarily want to cover that up. So we may just go 
left side, left and right for 4G, because we got two of them, and then either go left or right within uh, this area here up front and just put kind of the Wi-Fi one and just have them just kind of set up here in, in, in front of the dash. Uh, they do have the double-sided, uh, looks like double-sided sticky tape on it, and I have seen individuals just kind of maybe come here on the corner of the passenger windshield and kind of come down that way. Uh, my only fear is, you know, where I'm at, we get hot. We get really, really hot summers. And uh, I don't know how long that adhesive would hold up if I did something like stick it to the window. So let me do a little bit of a uh, little bit of digging here. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to make this connection, and then I'm going to do a little bit of digging and see how we can kind of route these uh, these three antennas. So let me get to that, and I'll bring you back. One moment. And welcome back. So I'm going to do a little bit more follow up on the using factory microphones for our. Uh, Android head unit and been doing a little bit little bit additional digging on this one as you can see we've got our test leads and everything out here I've been doing a lot of tracing as well as the mirror in this case the rear view mirror in this case comes down and has an intermediate plug-in right here on the passenger side behind this trim panel of the dashboard and then it proceeds forward to the radio now interesting enough and discovered this by accident. At first, I didn't think the factory microphone was gonna work, because uh, every time we tried it, uh, the head unit couldn't hear us speaking, but every time I plugged in the microphone that came with the head unit, we could do a bunch of test, uh, test, uh, test talking, and it would pick it up just fine. By sheer accident, uh, just doing some additional testing, also, the fact that, uh, and I have called tech support, this is a side issue I'll, I'll address later in a different clip, but the head unit won't turn off. Uh, we're, we're, again, we're, we've engaged tech support on that one to see if we can find a solution. Uh, we've got a case open with the manufacturer, but utilizing that um, issue means once we turn the key off in the truck and take away ignition power, it would then pick up the factory microphones when we had them plugged in. Found it by a complete fluke, just by accident. I happened to have the factory microphone plugged in, shut the key off in the ignition, and as soon as the bus went to sleep, as soon as the cluster powered down, it could use the factory microphone inside the rear view mirror. So something is happening when the key is on the on position that the truck is taking control of the microphones in the rear view mirror. Now, I didn't think I had a separate Uconnect module in this vehicle, and I don't think that I do because the radio was Uconnect capable from the factory. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have one. It also doesn't mean that the uh, all data is correct with their wiring diagrams because all data shows the wiring just goes from the mirror down, hits this connection point here, and then goes straight to the radio. And I can prove that's not necessarily the case. What we did, we started de-pinning options off of this jumper pair that goes up to the rearview mirror. Now, it's not a feature-rich rearview mirror because uh, it doesn't have auto dim. Uh, it doesn't have a sensor in it uh, for to detect dawn and dusk. That's in the dash itself. It's and again with no auto dim feature. It really only has the two microphones. Now it does have a Lin bus connection running to it. So at first I thought it had Lin bus, which is this wire we have deep pinned here, and it also has ignition power here in this one. And this is just a ground for the mirror. So my initial thought was, is that since that mirror is on the internal bus, um, it may, the microphones may be bus controlled, meaning that the vehicle is locking access to the microphones until in such time it knows it needs to use them. Meaning once we have the key in ignition and we have ignition power, the truck is taking control of the factory mics and obviously uh, it doesn't look like they're available or in enough of a state that the head unit can use it. So I did a little deep pinning as you can see and removed the 12 volt power, removed the LIN bus and removed the ground. So you can only see there's four connections left on this connector. 
all four of those are microphone. We've got a microphone one, a microphone two, as well as a, so we got a microphone one positive, negative, and a microphone two positive and negative. So we started de-pinning things and it didn't get any better. Anytime this connector is plugged into the harness that runs to the factory radio connector, with the key and ignition and turned on, the head unit can't utilize the microphone. Now to make sure it wasn't an issue with the head unit, we plugged in the microphone that came with it and we turned the key in the on position and the microphone worked fine. Worked with the key on, worked with the key off, no issue at all. So we did the same thing here and even though this is only four microphone feeds that's coming from the rearview mirror, again positive negative for both mic one and mic two, if it's plugged into here, it goes to that harness, and uh, interesting enough, I did pin this, uh, I did ohm check this, and continuity checked it, and continuity checked that, uh, you know, the pins that we grabbed off the factory harness do come back here to the appropriate pins for each microphone, and... As long as it's plugged in, again, no dice. Even though we've removed power, lend bus, and ground from that rear view mirror, if this connector is plugged into the factory connector here, we've got an issue. So doing more testing, we unplugged this connector from the factory, probed it with a couple of our probes, took microphone one, positive and negative, and hooked it directly into the head unit via one of these little deals here that you saw me use earlier. So we just went straight from this connector, which comes straight from that rear view mirror, and then plug this into the mic feed on the back of the head unit. So basically not plugging this connector into the harness. So the microphone wiring is no longer going through the harness to get to that radio to get to the radio connection on the back doing that it works it works with the key in the ignition and on and in the accessory accessory run position it also works if we turn the key off so something is happening with these microphone connections once they enter here enter the factory harness before they make it to the radio now again interesting enough i did continuity check this it doesn't seem like there's anything between here and that factory connector but there's something there so what we're going to do is kind of work around the issue a little bit now we're going to be using microphone one which as i understand it is the microphone that's closest to the driver's side microphone two is the one on top closest to the passenger side so we're going to do this. We're going to de-pin microphone one, positive and negative in our case, pull them out of that connector so we can utilize them directly. And then we're going to feed them into this little connector here. And we could actually either use this one. We could actually use a male end or a female end. It doesn't matter. And then we're just going to utilize a 3.5 millimeter stereo mic um, extension cable to then plug in from here to then go into the back of the unit. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, I'll, I'll show you when we're done, but we're going to de-pin microphone one, positive and negative, out of this connector, screw them into these terminals here, route this somewhere underneath the dash with just an extension cable going from here to the head unit, and then we'll be set. And then we'll have this head unit using microphone one out of our rear view mirror. And that will take care of our issue. This this has been an interesting one. As you can see, I've, I don't know if uh, I got deep, you can see I've got all the deep pinning tools here. I was playing around with some resistors earlier thinking it was a matching problem because the, the factory microphones do have a higher impedance than what comes in this particular um, head unit kit. So I figured it may have been that. So I was using some resistors in parallel, trying to match impedance and it, it still wasn't working for us. Uh, but it wasn't until again, just by sheer accident, I had the factory one plugged in, shut the key off on the ignition, and then lo and behold, dash went to sleep. I said, ah, you know, let me just try it. Tried it and it started working and on from there. So that's what the game plan is going to be. Like I said, I'll, I'll show you once it's all done, but we're going to de-pin 
mic one once again positive and negative out of this connector and in case you're curious we need pins 14 and pin 12 so we need to depin 12 and 14 from that connector and that's what we'll feed into there because remember when we looked at the pigtail coming off the head unit and we ohmed it out remember the pigtail on this particular head unit is only using two wires it's only using the left channel um, of that three pin stereo connector so that's what we're going to do we're going to go like for like we're going to use mic one just because it's closer to the driver's side i think you could actually use mic two and again they're, they're close enough you can see they're pretty close to each other on that review mirror so it may not make a difference but that's what we're going to do i'm going to get this deep and i'll bring you back and show you what it looks like one moment and welcome back. Well, I just got everything kind of test mocked up here before we put the connector on it. But we do have that connector depinned. Again, we're going to depin positive and negative microphone one in our case. In our case, our microphones each have the positive and negative, And I've seen a lot of other Uconnect examples where the microphones are wired differently. So you want to keep that in mind. Make sure that if you're going to attempt this, that you get an accurate wiring diagram of exactly what type of microphone setup you've got. But in our case, we got microphone one, positive, negative. Jump right over here to just one of those little terminal block uh, mic connections, just as a test. And to kind of show you here, let's see, what I want is to do a search. There we go. I'm going to hit the microphone one. Testing, 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 testing. And you can see we're getting our, it's picking us up on the screen there. Nice. So, you can see there it does work. And uh, what we're going to do now is just kind of button this up, uh, put one of those terminal. We're going to take this terminal, we're going to put the male terminal end over here, get it screwed in, get it secured, zip tied, taped up. And like I said, we'll just have a 3.5 millimeter uh, phono extension mm -hmm. cable. Uh, coming across here and going into there uh, once again reiterate I think I said this in the last clip, but uh, we only needed the one microphone uh, Because the adapter that goes into this head unit is only using the one microphone. It's only using the left channel um, of This uh, microphone connector even though that microphone connector is a stereo microphone connector It's just using the the tip basically the left channel of it So I'm gonna go ahead and get wrapped this up and I'll bring you back one moment and welcome back so we got our adapter on you can see with it all nice and taped up some fabric tape re-secured to our loom and we started securing it into the harness back here behind the glove box as you can see right here and then what we'll do once our extension cable comes in we'll just continue continue to follow uh, the bottom of this harness uh, all the way and just uh, get our extension to kind of come back in the radio and plug in so it means this one that we so diligently ran uh, at the beginning of the video and where we tap the microphone directly out the back of the factory connector we're just going to have to remove uh this one unfortunately so i mean that wasn't really wasted work it was work that ultimately led into the uh, further discovery of initially led us to what the problem was so the nice thing is at this point uh, we have a functioning uh, factory mic which is mic one again in our case going into our head unit in which our head unit now recognizes it whether the key is in the uh, ignition or not remember before when this connector was plugged in to the harness using the factory harness when we tapped off the back of the factory harness if the key was in the uh, the on position the head unit couldn't see couldn't pick up the microphone it wasn't until the ignition was off and the interior uh, uh networks went to sleep that it would finally talk to it uh, even with all the power and lin bus and everything deep pinned out of this connector just to summarize and all we had was the four microphone connectors coming from our rear view mirror down to this connector and into the factory harness as long as it was flowing from this point forward out of the factory connector uh it wouldn't work it wasn't until we finally just depinned it 
and ran it straight from this connector i'm basically pulling it out of the factory harness from this point to that point and just running it straight from here uh, to where we need it to go again bypassing that length of factory harness from here to there and now it's it's happy with the microphone so there's definitely something happening within that harness that we that i do not see and that is not on my current wiring diagram so i guess take it with a take it with a grain of salt but that's where it sits uh won't be till tomorrow till we get our extension cable in and we can finish up finish up our connection but we know it works now which is awesome so we've actually accomplished so far two goals that we set out one was to get the factory microphone functional uh, and uh, the second one if uh, which which I'll, I'll tell you about is it'll be in an, it'll be in the next upcoming segment but i'll give you a heads up so we got a functioning factory microphone uh integrated and we also have our gps working using our cirrus xm antenna using that uh adapter we showed you earlier but don't worry we're going to cover all that uh once they get back with us and we can nail down the problem of this head unit not wanting to uh power itself off aka and or go to sleep i think they actually put them into sleep mode once the ignition's off either way it's not going into sleep mode and it's not even going into any kind of power down mode uh, so they're working on it and we're waiting to hear back so that being said uh, i'll pause you and i'll bring you back for the next bit so one moment and welcome back well um you can see we've got our trim piece removed that uh would either a or a be a speaker and the daylight uh daylight uh, sensor um, in our case just the daylight sensor but we were able to get them kind of dropped in and started fishing them this way now we took the glove box out and no i didn't include it in the video you you see me do that several times on this channel but once you get the glove box out one bolt you can pop out this upper cubby and you can see where the wires are coming through all three of them and that little corner right there there's enough room if you've got small hands you can do this if you have large hands i suggest you do not do this uh, but you can kind of get up in here and push this duct work down a little bit out of the side that you can fish the wires or we were able to fish the wires down this way towards the right there's a little a uh, little bit of opening here we were able to fish them down this way and just kind of feed them down until we could reach in and grab them from underneath and kind of pull them the rest of the way through so as you can see we've got our two um 4g antennas and our wi-fi antenna and then uh, all we have to do now is we'll figure out a placement it looks like at least on this dash right here i'll just grab this one as an example if you come far enough over there's enough of a gap between the edge of the dash and the bottom of the windshield that they'll just kind of drop in place there's a little piece of foam they'll just kind of push up against it and kind of hold it there uh, so i think that's where we may put again the lte and the wi-fi will probably go on this side and the other LTE will uh, end up putting, I'm sorry, the other 4G slash LTE will end up putting on the driver's side kind of in a similar spot and just tuck the wiring uh, around the front lip of the dash. Now it's gonna mean that uh, our trim piece here, it may be happy, we'll have to try it. It may be happy and kind of snap in place. It may put a little pressure on that wiring, but I, I don't think it'll be much to cause an issue um if it keeps this from sitting too flush we may just have to come in here and just quickly just put a little bit of a notch in it you know to be honest with you it wouldn't take much i, I may go ahead and do that once we get the sensor situated uh, and that way that'll just allow it to kind of snap in place and hit flush but I'll, I'll show it to you once it's done the wiring here we can easily just loop over this vent here and get it to come back out of the the front radio here so i'm going to work on getting this wiring fished uh, get it to pop out here and get those antennas situated and i'll bring you back one moment and welcome back so you can see we got a thing run you can see the wire kind of poke out here a little bit because i need to pull some pull some slack in 
But other than that, they kind of just disappear into that little little fold. You can see them if you're obviously sitting inside the vehicle, but from outside the vehicle, you, you don't notice it at all. Uh, what I did on this one, it looks like it's okay. Like you can get like one wire to fit through that corner when you put the molding back in place fine. But on this side, since we have two, um, one being Wi-Fi, the other one being the uh, 4G, I just took a, a nice sharp box cutter and just kind of shaved off that very, very pointy corner there on the end a little bit. And that should allow that wire to clear and this piece to kind of snap and and lay flat. So let me get this up in there and I'll show you what it looks like. One moment. And welcome back. Well, welcome back to this nice dreary rainy day. We are back outside in our cab of our 2016 2500. And in the previous segment, uh, we covered a little bit of what happened and kind of we had to change direction a little bit on how we integrated the factory mics into the head unit. And just to kind of finish up that conversation real quick, just to show you uh, from our adapter here, right where it has this intermittent connection goes up we just got a little three foot piece of uh, 3.5 millimeter stereo uh, phono extension cable plugged it into our adapter here and came out to an appropriate adapter to then plug into the radio so that'll take care of our mic connection now since we did try to pin it from the factory connection and realized that the bug that we had with it was a trying to pull it off the factory connection here if the power if the key was the ignition and the ignition was on either in accessories or run then the head unit couldn't see the microphone in the rearview mirror uh, but if you turn the key off then it could utilize it and see it just fine so we found out that what we had to do was tap our microphone um, output from our connector here on the side this intermediate connection now this intermediate connection takes the wiring from the rear view mirror and plugs it into the main harness which then runs from here and eventually comes out to the main factory plug there so again just to summarize something is happening between this connection when it goes through the factory harness and comes out to that plug there that throws it for a loop when the ignition is on and then those microphones aren't accessible in the way we're trying to use them. But again, no harm, no foul. We just depend it from this connector here. Now we have a direct wire uh, to microphone one going into the adapter. And again, coming out to this cable here, which will plug into the back of the head unit. Uh, now, since we had to kind of take this apart to remove the adapter that we had when we were trying to use it directly off the factory and we were troubleshooting a non uh, shutdown issue when the ignition was off, the head unit wasn't going into power off slash sleep mode. Uh, and we worked with um, ADC mobile tech support who then got with, got with Linkswell, had some emails back and forth, and I think we've isolated the problem. And the problem, which is why I have a picture here, is that you'll see this picture shows where all these little connectors, accessories and options plug onto this radio. And what had happened was if we came in here and unplugged all of these, then the radio would shut down fine. So that told them that one of these connections that I made was actually in the wrong spot. And just a word of warning to you, and it can be done and just for giggles, I tried it. I took some of these connections and there are some spots where some of these connections can go into more than one opening. Even though there isn't the same number of pins, not only will it go into some of these, but it will also lock the tag in. Like you'll hear the distinct click, like when that locking tab engages. So you want to definitely want to be careful when you're plugging all these options in that you, you get them into the right spots. So since we kind of had to deinstall everything and just to kind of take a second look and make sure that we've got all our plugs in the right spot and take care of this microphone issue, I figured I'd go ahead and take this opportunity to reshoot a little bit of a video here on what we're doing with this harness itself. So this is the adapter that plugs into the factory connector. And what we have gone through and done is just kind of routed this harness a little bit and kind of molded it and fabric taped it in a couple of spots to kind of better reflect how this lays 
once everything's in place and you've got it hooked up to the radio again just kind of help to ease us along to get everything connected and get all our wiring in there in such a way everything will fit and then we can get our bezel snapped back in place but we have what's considered a ram low audio meaning we don't have an integrated factory alpine system so we have our audio output plugged into our what you can see there is our ram low connector this other one is ram high which is what they consider your system if you have an integrated factory alpine system because there are differences in how the speaker pinouts are done and out and inputs to the amplifier and so on and so forth so that's why there's a slightly different pigtail there if you have an alpine system but we don't so we're going to use ram low there i've got this fabric taped off because it didn't come in the box but this this is for a speaker in the event that you have the park sense sensors and as you get close to something if you don't get the audio through the radio because it does affect some trim levels per links well where even though the system is sending the tone it doesn't come out on the head unit and in those cases they give you a speaker that you can plug into this little connector here so you can hear those park sense tones now my kit didn't come with it so maybe they've kind of further either refine the category of the years years and trim levels this affects or maybe my kit just didn't come with it either way i'm not concerned with having that speaker plugged in i'll still see the indication on the panel as far as the park sense plus you know again i use my rear view and side view mirrors anytime i'm in reverse uh just i usually don't even actually look at what the truck's trying to tell me is there i feel, i like to see for myself if that makes sense so since we don't have that speaker we just covered up with some factory tape just to keep any shorts from happening we routed some excess wiring here not being used again this is for a links well amplifier which we do not have this is additional power taps where you can activate an amplifier things of that nature we're not going to use it so we just kind of followed uh the curvature of this because this is the main plug goes in the back of the radio this is our can box decoder or a can bus decoder our red box there that allows it to talk to the can bus and do things uh, such as uh, interact with various components on the vehicle uh, in our case we only need the one connection there which goes on that end there we don't need the smaller one on certain models and trims on these boxes it requires two connections it does not for this particular ram so we just have this taped off since we're not gonna have a links well amplifier at least in here right away we're not so that's just taped off to prevent any shorts and again we just kind of tuck these against the wiring harness just to kind of keep them out of the way now as far as our audio and video outputs from our harness going to the inputs on the radio we really got just uh, kind of a minimum here uh, i'd want to hit and hooked up the auxiliary which is the 3.5 millimeter jack on the headrest here that gives you your auxiliary to the auxiliary end that's the white and red rca you see there you can see we did wrap these connections in some fabric tape just to help secure them and we did do the reverse camera output from the harness to the factory camera input going to the radio this will account for our backup cam which in our case of this ram is inside of the handle for the rear tailgate i did go through on this harness on this side of it though and i depinned and removed the CD audio option because we do not have a factory CD uh, op option on this car. I don't ever plan on adding the factory CD. So I went ahead and depinned it just to get rid of some extra RCA connections here that weren't going to be used for anything. Much like you kind of see here where on this camera input connector, they also give you provisions for front camera input um a right camera input and another auxiliary video um, i could have depinned these from this harness but i wanted to leave these in there in the event that we do want to add a front or a side cam and that way the inputs are already there so again we just covered them with some factory tape to help keep them insulated 
And on this one here, which is our auxiliary, again, the only thing we're using here, uh, just to reiterate, is the auxiliary out, which is that 3.5 millimeter uh, phono jack. All the other options you see here, which are pigtails, you'll see that you've got, um, uh, let's see here. So, yep, we got that one. Yep, that's all our auxiliaries. I'm looking for where these wires, okay, the wires are coming from the CAN inputs. These are already covered from the factory. These are various reverse power as you can see there, a 360 trigger. Other options we weren't using, but I didn't necessarily want to remove them, at least not right now. So again, we just followed the harness and kind of zip tied everything up just to try to keep it as neat as neat as we could. So that's really um, the only options as far as these inputs and outputs that go into the as you can see, right-hand side of the radio here that we're using that tie into this harness. So the cam inputs and the aux in are tied into the adapter harness. And the other options that we are using is the eight pin USB harness you see there. We'll be plugging that one in. That one has the interface for our factory USB. You can see it there. That will plug into our gray USB connection here. And it will eventually, after a little bit of a journey, end up here. So that's where our factory USB, data USB will end up. This is also USB as you can see, but this is strictly just power. And that's plug, that's got power that comes off a connector underneath the driver's seat. It's not tied into the radio at all. So we'll be using that one. We'll also be taking the extra USB labeled phone link. And we'll be adding a section of uh, a three. I think this is probably a six foot section of high quality USB-C high speed transfer extension cable and we'll be adding it to that phone link port that way we can either run it out here or and i've got some usb connections that we may kind of stick it in the well of the top of the console here uh, just to give us another port that we can either a charge from or b do something like plug a you know a solid state drive into something along that nature uh, and let's see, we've also got this little adapter here. I'm going to cover that. I'll go ahead and cover that now. Let me get you the part number, what this is. Now, spoiler alert, we know this works already because we had the radio in here once before, and it actually works quite well. This is kind of a universal connector that will plug in, allow us to plug into the Cirrus XM antenna connection, and we're gonna plug it into the back of the head unit for the GPS. And it's gonna allow us, and at least in our case it works, uh, it allows us to use the Cirrus XM antenna as a GPS antenna and not have to use the GPS antenna that came in the kit. Again, nothing wrong with the GPS antenna that came in the kit, but it, it allows us to have you know, one less thing that we've got to route somewhere in the dash. Uh, let's see, we've got our other antenna adapter that we need to attach here, which is going to go on this connection here. And that just adapts the factory AM FM antenna uh, to be used by the head unit. And of course, our antenna wiring, which you've already saw in a previous clip. Uh, we do kind of have everything uh, finished at this point and running out, but just to recap that for you, is that we've got one of the 4G antennas and the Wi-Fi antenna running over here, kind of pushed down towards the edge of the window. You can kind of just barely see the antenna sticking up between the edge there. And we've got the other 4G antenna kind of tucked away on the right where this shaded section of the bottom of the window windshield is on the driver's side. And that wiring makes its way through underneath and then comes out here. So we'll be getting those plugged in. So again, the Wi-Fi connection, which is the screw on one and the two 4G connections, which are the purple ones. Awesome. So again, it looks like a lot, but uh, you know, you're, you're good. Uh, just kind of take it uh, one piece at a time, nice and slow and steady. 
And what I am looking for, let me find it. Oh, one moment, one moment. I think I left it inside the, the workshop there. Let me go grab that one connector. And welcome back. Sorry about that. And this is the other one I want to show you here. Again, this is the mic input. But remember, this mic input also has uh, several other RCAs that would normally be on it. And what those are are outputs. Like if you have external amplifiers, things of that nature. Let me uh, show you one here. You notice this one says subwoofer. So they've got a subwoofer out, a left and a right out, both on the, the female connectors. But you can see they've been depinned. So this connector is usually your RCA outs for your amplifiers, things of that nature. We've depinned everything and reduced it just to that microphone connection. Uh, and just to reiterate, and I think I covered this before, but you can notice on our mic connection, that's how we, when we detaped, when we untaped all of this, that's how we discovered that, you know, only the mic was only used, only utilizing those two connections. So again, we just kind of depinned everything we knew that we weren't going to use because we knew that we weren't going to ever add external amplifiers uh, into this vehicle. So, you know, rather than have all this extra just kind of you know, dangling there behind the scenes, again, we just depinned it to help reduce some of the clutter. Again, nothing bad about the manufacturer. This is not a negative in any way, shape or form. And I'm not suggesting that you go through and do the same thing on yours. It's just something that we wanted to uh, attempt to do here. So with that being said, it was kind of a rundown of all our wiring, all our connections, kind of what we're going to be doing for options. So what I'm going to do next is get you uh, situated. We're going to start making some uh, connections here and I'll, uh, I'll bring you back. And I'll also show you that part number uh, for this adapter we're using for the um, uh, GPS antenna. So one moment. And welcome back. So we're clipped in and to our factory harness here. Just kind of getting the harness situated uh, from having this thing in previously and, and knowing now where a lot of this wiring is going to sit just based on where it plugs into the back of the radio. So that's our main connector there, which kind of sits, if you're facing the radio, this would be on the right hand side of the radio where this one's going to plug into. Uh, and then on the left hand side of the radio again facing the radio uh, Would be where all of these accessory plugs are going to plug in And you can kind of see that right there You've got your main plug here And again if you're facing it from the front on the on the right and then on the left you got all your accessories You got your GPS which is in blue you got your two 4G's which are in purple here and you got your Wi-Fi which is your screw on connection now what we're also going to be doing here since we have a RAM low we've got an AC connection here that'll go into this white plug and then we also got the big old honkin power connection which goes to the blower itself blower and the current blower resistor if I remember correctly will also plug in here if you got a RAM mid then you'll only have this center connection here and if you have what they call a ram high which is automatic climate control then you're only going to have this one here but then you're going to use the adapter in the kit but we won't be using this one in our case and we'll be using this one and that one and as promised uh so i'm just kind of getting the harness situated where it's going to be so this is going to be on if we're facing the dash now this is going to be on our right these smaller connections here are going to go on the left and then what we can do is take our adapter cable which we're going to plug into our cirrus xm connection what we're going to do is just get that tab lined up there and the blue connection with the top of the yellow Sirius XM antenna connection. That clips in nicely, and then that gives us the end which will plug into the radio. Now we know that that is going to be on the far side over here with our smaller connections. So we'll just see if we can get that to lay over here. We know where that needs to go. We know the adapter for our factory antenna. Which again, just going to line up the top of that connector with the top of the factory connection. 
which again, usually the white one is going to be your factory AM, FM antenna. It's also going to be the nice thicker coax one. There we go. That is in. That will also come on that side of the radio. And then we need to get our adapter for our factory USB. Which again is our eight position USB harness or eight pin USB harness, I guess, however you want to say it. And the factory one just plugs into that matching adapter you see there. There we go. Just got to get it lined up so it'll go into place. There we go. So hopefully you heard that kind of, just kind of click in place. And again, this is a smaller input-output connector, however you want to call it. And we know that's going to be over here on this side where we need to make our connection. So once again, we got another cable that's going to go underneath this big old thing, a factory harness. Okay, awesome. So we got all of that, and of course these two here which Y into our factory harness again they're taking our auxiliary input and our camera which is also going to come over here to the side of the radio so you can kind of see why we taped the harness the way we did and reshaped it a little bit just to kind of help things guide along because uh, what we're going to do is the goal when we're going to push this in is that you got at least on this one you can see we got ample space between this metal bracket and the, the bottom of where the factory radio would go in. So there's more than enough space in here just to kind of take this wiring and shove it underneath as you're pushing the radio in. And if you did like we did and just remove the top of the glove box to help run the antenna cabling up front, then you can kind of also just reach in here and you can just kind of get in here, you can see my fingers, and help pull that wiring along to get it to go through there. And of course, we got this our mic connection here, which we got to make sure that we plug in the back of the radio and mate up. So we get our lovely integrated factory microphone. Okay, so what I'm going to work on next is just getting this trim into position. You've kind of seen me do this before, even if it was a factory radio or a factory setup. Kind of the easiest way to do this, at least in my opinion, is if you take this trim and start it out, uh, try to show you here, start it out low like this and get this leftmost vent underneath the shifter, you see it there, and just get this one to fall in place, that still gives you enough room that you can kick it out to the side on the passenger side here and get behind all this and put all your wiring in. Uh, another way around it, if you have the shifter, is that you can put it in the gear and drop the shifter all the way down and that gives you enough room to clear it. But I find, and I'll, I'll show you once I get it up here, that once you have this part in, it'll kind of lean forward, but this will help hold this trim in place while you're making all your electrical connections. So let me get started on this and I'll bring it back. One moment. And welcome back. So you can see we're just in the process of getting our connections in. We don't have them all in yet, which is uh, which is not until we start making connections like to the antenna and to other factory connections, like for climate control. When you start to ha have to have this piece of trim relatively close because you just don't have a lot of slack in the, the factory wiring. But we got another enough slack in here that what we can do is that what we've done is we've got a Wi-Fi antenna, we've got our two 4G antennas. You can see the purple connections there connected, and you can see that we have at least for this install all of the inputs and output connectors here on this bigger bank that we've got connected. And just to verify that we got everything we need in the right spots, and just to I'll cover that here in a second. Let's see, going back to our diagram here. And what I did, and I'm to each their own, but uh, I found it useful just to do all the bottom rows 
first because if you do the top ones then you're kind of fighting to get around the top ones in order to make the bottom ones click in but going from the top here on this end closest to the uh, a GPS antenna we've got what should be the red plug which is the factory USB retention and phone link which we have there and then in our case uh, what would normally be next is a green DVR connection which we're not using DVR power the next spot over which is a smaller connection has a red X on it in the diagram it isn't used at all and finally the last connection on top is the black camera input harness which we have here and so going back and doing the bottom row what in the first connection spot is the gray auxiliary input which we have and then the next one is only for GM products it's for OnStar so we're going to skip the next spot the next one over is for a white USB that's that third USB option that we're not going to use so we're going to skip it and then finally, the last connection on the bottom row for our diagram is our yellow plug, which is our audio output slash mic input. But just remember, we removed all the output options from that connector and using it just for the input. So there you go. In this case, we are using just four of the available connectors on that because that's all we needed for this application. And the rest will be done uh, with the AC connections and the one main connection here. We still have our GPS antenna, which we can go ahead and make that one because thanks to our adapter cable, it's, it's actually long enough to do. Let me fish it out here. And speaking of that adapter cable, I promise I'd give you a part number. I got this off Amazon. There's the manufacturer. I'll put a link in the description as well. And there's your part number. So it's just a male to female. Now, when you look at the diagram on this online, and what they'll tell you, and this is true, they've got these keyed in such a way that this male to female will actually plug into any, pretty much any colored connector. And yes, I'll, I'll show you the name of that connector. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so I'm not gonna try, but you can see there, it's F-A-K-R-A. Uh, let's go ahead and get our GPS antenna hooked up while we're here again top to top just to show you that that does fit That locks in nice and good. So that now ties that's now going to make use of our Cirrus XM as our GPS antenna so obviously in this case we know that we don't have Cirrus XM on this truck anymore and we don't have plans on ever adding it again um, mainly just because there's so many other audio options out there. Again, it's not a dig against Cirrus XM. There's just a lot of other options out there for audio. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll take advantage of the antenna. Again, just to help kind of limit the amount of other third-party products, antennas, things of that nature. Uh, plus, you know, if, if it allows us to make it a little bit more integrated than factory, that's, that, that, that's what I'm striving for okay let's see here so again we got our can box our can bus decoder box already plugged into our connector there so what we're left with is the main am fm antenna the main harness going to the back of the radio our climate controls and of course plugging in our options our factory options our factory buttons are still there and then plugging in our four-wheel drive two-wheel drive select switch there and when you start getting into items like this when you get you're starting to plug in the factory harness that's when it gets a bit interesting because you gotta have the trim a little bit closer so i'm gonna start moving this trim closer getting it in position as we do as we do that as we spoke about earlier i'm just going to start to make sure that all this wiring is just going underneath here and we'll just kind of slowly push it in place uh, all of our antenna wiring as we get closer and closer to it uh, we can just reach in through here through our cubby hole and just kind of pull the slack out of our wiring and just kind of help everything ease into place because you can kind of see how it's going to go there we're just going to take this box this connector push it down uh, and just start feeding this in as we get this in place now even uh, Linkswell's install document says this will fit into here 
They said you may have to fidget with it to get it to do it, but they said it will fit into here. Uh, they said there really isn't a need to have to cut this. They said you can cut this you know, like lower piece here um, that goes across that the factory radio would normally sit on, but they said it's really not necessary to do so. So that's what we're going to attempt. Uh, we're going to get it close finish up our connections. I'm going to bring you back. We're going to do a power on test real quick. Then we're going to shut the key, make sure it still goes to sleep. Uh, and as long as it still goes to sleep, then we'll go ahead and get everything snapped into position. And then we'll come, we'll bring it back again and we'll do a little bit more uh, in-depth test. So let me work on getting this position and I'll bring you back. One moment. And welcome back. So we went ahead and hooked up our antenna which again is there towards the back but as you can see what i was talking about earlier if you get the vent here on this driver's side started and just kind of stop there and let it kind of lean forward the shifter will help hold it there but you can see you got enough of a gap here you can still kind of reach in and have plenty of room to get your hands in here to make the remaining part of your electrical connections so let me get these uh let me get these taken care of and i'll bring you back one moment and welcome back so it, it seems to be going okay but one item that we are hitting is the length of our adapter cable that we're using for our, our gps antenna now the one they send you is this square gps antenna here but you'll notice it has a much shorter plastic connector on its barrel uh, so we went ahead and disassembled it by just taking the key out of the side and then sliding the connector out. So I'm gonna disassemble this connector and see if we can put that fitting on it. Uh, albeit, this one's not a right angle. Uh, I wish this one was a right angle. I'd have ordered it as a right angle, but I wanna see if by putting a, a shorter um, plastic sheathing on this, if that will allow us to get in there and connect it and then kind of get free because we're just kind of hitting this bottom piece of plastic trim i mean if i have to get in there i can notch that plastic trim in a couple of places uh, and that'll also fix the issue uh, but i'd rather see if i can try this first either way we may still have to notch it even if we were to use their cable that comes in it because again this bottom piece of plastic just it comes really really close to those antennas and such in the back uh, but i'm gonna try this and uh, obviously if you're watching this in the video then it worked so one moment and in case you're curious just to show you that once you get that center piece pulled out of there in either case you can then just pull on that connector and it'll come out of this uh, plastic retainer and you can just pop the new one in now we know this is a good fit because it it fits that connector just fine and this is the one that came on the factory GPS antenna that we've now added to our antenna. And then we just have to take the little plastic clip and put it back on the side of the connector. And just a really, really small flat tip will help you kind of pull that clip out. Just put that back in. That re-secures it. And then we're going to give this one a connection and we'll give it a try. So you can see that we've gone from, got a nice short connector on it now versus what we had on there before. And if we do these end for end, you can see the, the length difference. So we're going to give that one a shot and I'll let you know how it goes. One moment. And welcome back. Well, it is snapped in. For better or worse, it snapped in. <laughs> uh, we got all the connectors on the back of it. We're just going to do another test here now. Uh, using the shorter um, connector that came on the factory uh, GPS antenna that you saw in the previous clip, the, the shorter plastic piece, did help. Uh, the other one that was a slight issue, and I did have to put a slight bend in the wire, and I'd... I normally don't like doing that, so I would strongly suggest, but the Wi-Fi antenna that screwed onto the back, 
probably it would be it would be a lot easier if there was a 90 degree connector on that or if you pick up a 90 degree connector of your own um, doing that and then like we said just kind of making sure that everything gets situated left to right and slowly push the harness in as you go and then finally uh, just make sure that the connectors at the top just kind of almost fold at kind of like a 90 degree angle to get it um, over that plastic lip that we were looking at earlier that's behind the radio uh, and that seemed to help immensely because uh, and then slightly pick up on the top as you push it forward a little bit and all of a sudden it all just kind of boom, it all just went boom and fell in place and you can see that we were not hitting our little uh, wiring here so what we can do nicely because we have a nice little gap between here is that once we get our sim situated we can just stuff it between uh, these two pieces of the plastic here and kind of get it out of the way so yeah I would do that if you had the, if, you, if you got this particular dash set up that seemed to work out quite well fish it up this way tape it in place to hold it uh, if you're going to use your factory Cirrus XM as a GPS antenna uh, then if you're going to pick up this adapter, I would definitely look to see if they have a 90 degree version of this or just take the plastic piece off, which in this case, this was the part that went on the radio and just swap it out with the one that comes on the uh, connector for the kit. And then other than that, it's just, again, just that uh, Wi-Fi connection that screws on. I did have to kind of slightly bend that at a little bit of a 90 degree angle. Uh, just to get it to clear the lip and then finally as you can see everything uh, fell into place at that point so let me get you paused and we're going to do some uh, do a little bit more power-up testing so one moment and welcome back we can see that we've got our trim reinstalled our cup holder reinstalled our inserts and our fasteners we're going to hold off on this fastener until we can get again get our sim situation uh, squared away but for now we do have that fastener in and all of our rubber inserts for our cup holders and such we also have the upper and lower glove boxes in as well and on the upper glove box what we're doing right now is we're just using it to kind of hide a usb extension cable because remember on this glove box we do not have the light that would normally be here so we just kind of ran the took advantage of the hole and ran the wire through it and what that extension cable is coming off of if you remember on this head unit was an eight pin uh, usb connector that tied in the integrated factory usb hub as well as it gave you another port you can plug a phone into. So what we did was we ran an extension cable from that into here and we can use it that to plug a phone into for charging. We can plug a hard drive into it. We can do things of that nature with it. So if in case we need to use it for charging, we could just run out our phone holder sits here that I haven't reinstalled yet and just plug the phone in. Or, or if it works, you know, if we want to, we can plug a solid state drive and hide it in there. We'll also test it here. We could potentially also put a little like one terabyte or so solid state drive and hide it in our console as well because we have wireless Android Auto with this unit. So we don't necessarily need to use that USB cable uh, in order to use Android Auto with this particular head unit. Now, if the SIM that we're getting in works, then we won't even really need a phone uh, to do navigation and things of that nature. We could do it directly from the Android unit itself. So with that being said, let's power up here. And what you're going to see is what they consider a fast boot. What, if you've been around IT for a while, then you might consider it like I do, kind of coming out of sleep slash standby. And we've already powered this up once and kind of did a little bit of a test with it. So it's already done its long boot, which takes about 15 to 20 seconds. But you'll see what I mean here. So I'm going to turn the ignition to run. I'm not going to start it, but we are going to be in run. And you can see we're automatically already at our screen. So it just kind of comes out of standby mode. Now, the one item you could probably hear here is if I scroll over to climate control, you see it's on a one and I can't turn that off. I can raise it. We got a four speed fan because we're ram low. But I can't turn it off. I would like to, I'm going to email their tech support and see if that can be changed because 
with any time the ignition's in the run position, it runs the blower at its lowest value, which if you're working on your vehicle and troubleshooting something and you need, 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 need the ignition to be in run, then you don't necessarily want the blower motor to have that parasitic or have that draw while you're looking at something. But you'll notice the hazard button stays a physical button. You can see that there on the dash. Yep. And we can turn that off. But let's test one of the options we did, which was to integrate the number one microphone off our rear view mirror, which is closest to the driver, into our head unit. Remember, we had the tap in over here because we found that using it directly from the back of the factory harness, if the key was in the on position, the head unit couldn't see the mic until we had the key off. When we found out from tapping directly here and running our own cable over, it was. But let's give, let's give that another test. So if we go into Chrome, Candy, candy, candy. Yeah. Candy, candy, candy. Oh, it's not one to pick that up. Let's try soda, soda, soda. There you go. I just had to be louder. Wasn't quite talking loud enough, but you could see it picked it up. And just like any other voice recognition, you know, occasionally... Uh, it does have its uh, issues, but it did find it. It is seeing it. It is working with that factory integrated microphone. Matter of fact, let's give that one more go here. Let's see. Uh, trying to think of something that we could search for real quick. Fertilizer. Fertilizer, fertilizer. There we go. Fertilizer, fertilizer. Awesome. So again, no issue there. So let's go back to home. I'm going to set you up on the center console now. And I'm going to pause you. I'm going to make sure you're zoomed in. And I'm going to bring you back. And then the next thing we're going to look at is the GPS antenna. One moment. And welcome back. Okay, so I got you zoomed in about as far as I can. And I have to treat this one a little bit differently. I apologize. So if we come back in the home and we go into settings, come in the system in the top right hand corner of this unit and then there's a GPS option right there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on GPS but I'm gonna kind of cover the left hand side of the screen because I don't want my GPS coordinates out there for the world and then I'll bring you back in. But you can see we're getting several good green GPS signals and it says that we have 22 satellites available currently in our current position. So awesome. So that tells me that our Cirrus XM antenna, at least for now, is working as a GPS antenna. And I have tested this before using Google Maps and such. And so there hasn't been, you know, an issue thus far um, using that. So that is awesome. So the factory integrated mic is working fine. Using our Cirrus XM antenna as a GPS antenna is also working extremely well. So that at least gives us two additional points of factory integration uh, that we didn't have before. Again, it's not a dig on the kit. There's nothing wrong with the kit. There's nothing wrong with the mic that comes with it. There's nothing wrong with the GPS antenna that comes with it. Um, I did it because I wanted to try to do it and I wanted to see if, again, I could get a little bit more factory integration out of it, which for now, it seems to be working fine. So that is it in kind of a nutshell. Let me just power this down so that blower motor's not running. And I'm gonna open up the driver's door here just to simulate an exit event. And you should see the screen go to sleep. There you go, within a couple seconds. Sleep slash standby mode. So it's ready for the next, uh, what you would call waking up and or fast boot. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. And I realize it was a really, really long video or what's gonna be a really long video once I get it all in the editor. Uh, but 
we were doing a couple things here that I saw a lot of individuals ask for it in the forums and I wanted to try it and I wanted to see if it would work. One was using a, a factory microphone and then two was, at least in my mind, I also saw some individuals saying that the Cirrus XM antenna could be used as GPS. So I wanted to try that as well. And those two, at least for now, are working fine. Now, I don't expect those items to be warranted, and if I have problems with them, I sure I, I sure do not expect Linkswell, you know, to support me in that because I am doing a couple of things that are, you know, beyond the scope of their kit. So just kind of keep that keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, but with that being said. Um, there's a lot more I still need to do to this unit. I need to customize it and put a better UI launcher on there, uh, things of that nature. We definitely need to revisit the sim once the new sim comes in, but I'll do another, a new video uh, covering that sim and kind of how well that works uh, once that piece comes in. Like I said, it is wireless, Android Auto, and wireless CarPlay capable, if I remember correctly. I know it does work wireless with Android because I have an Android phone tested that earlier and it works fine. So with that being said, that is at least my version of this install. Um, if you have stuck around this long and not subscribed, please consider doing so. We're going to have a lot more content coming up, especially on this unit here. I will make follow-up videos and kind of let you know how this plays out long run. Uh, let, I'll come back and let you know how that AC question comes out, whether that blower can be turned off. We'll definitely revisit the SIM uh, issue. And another thing I want to check on is what the standby power draw of this unit is. So we'll do some measurements directly out at the battery and see what our overall sleep consumption for the entire vehicle is. Because this truck that we're in is not a daily driver. And uh, I can only speculate, but I'm assuming, assuming now until we test it, assuming that this is probably going to have a slightly higher standby power draw than a factory unit. So we want to be mindful of that, knowing that this doesn't move every day, that, you know, that we don't get in a situation where we drain our battery. So with that said, once again, if you have not subscribed, please consider doing so. Uh, if you have, I thank you immensely. Hopefully you found all this information useful and I'll definitely bring you back for the next one. Thank you much. Bye. And just to reiterate, there's a nice shot of it there. That's a, in my, in my mind, I'm a, I like tech items and I'm kind of a bit of a geek. I'll admit that. And that looks, uh, oh, that looks so much better than that little RA2 radio that we did have in here. With that being said, I'll let you go. Talk to you next one. Bye.